Hi everyone. So this is going to be a full demo of uh, the subspace navigation for Confluence Cloud app. And we're going to show you how it works, how you can use it, and specifically how you can configure it in a way that your documentation within Confluence is as structured as possible. When you first install the app, you'll be able to see this particular section right below your actual Confluence menu, which says there is no navigation defined yet. Start to create one by using the configuration icon on the right. And you need to do specifically what the message tells you, which is to just click on the configuration icon in order for you to be able to configure your menu slash navigation menu. Once you click there, this is how your configuration dialog looks like. So there's multiple set sections to this. So uh, let's just start going through them. First, you have the structure configuration. Whenever you want to include a top level item within your menu, so the items that are going to appear within the first section of your menu, you do so by, by adding items to the root. So whatever item you add to the root is going to be part of your top level elements. There are uh, five types of elements that you can include within your menu. You have your folder, you have your space, your internal link, your external link and your CQL. We're going to go through each as an example, so it's much easier for you to understand how to use them. Let's start with a folder. Basically, a folder is just as the name itself says. Uh, here you can group together multiple types of elements. Uh, you can specify the folder name, which is uh, definitely required. So let's say this folder name is titled navigation. As you'll see, this section here includes a live preview of whatever you're currently working with within your structure configuration. So it shows you how your navigation menu will look like once you click on uh, save and you submit the menu. It makes it easier for you to understand if the way that you're currently structuring your menu is the way that you actually want it to be. And yeah, it's, it's quite helpful. It's a quite helpful way to sort of look into how you're working. So we already included one top level element. Let's include another one. Let's say we want to include a space. We've tried to make it very easy for you to look through your Confluence spaces. Um, you can just type to start searching for one. Actually, I'm going to include the Comunardo product space because it's one of my favorites. Additionally, what we've included is that for each Confluence space, you can also include an alternative title. One thing that you do have to keep in mind, though, is that alternative titles are um, visible for all of your uh, users. So if you have something very specific then that you don't want all of your users to know about or show, then you have to be careful with what alternative title you specify. This message or uh, this topic was, will also be visible to you once you actually type the alternative title. So let's say test, we already let you know that you need to be aware of um, the permissions issue. So I'm not including an alternative title. I want everyone to see that this is a common Ardo product space. Next, we have an internal link. Similar to spaces, you can also search through internal links for pages or blog posts inside your Confluence. Um, I'm just getting my overview page because yeah, why not? Uh, Deas overview page. Great. Next, I'm adding an external link. So uh, apart from internal links within your Confluence, you can also add other uh, external links outside of Confluence. So whatever you can think of, it can be a link to a YouTube video, a link to a blog post outside, whatever you would prefer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to include a link to our Comunardo website, which is or to our blog post. Yeah, that could be one as well. 
Um, so one thing that you need to be aware of, and we've included this here as well, the URL should definitely start with uh, these in order for the um, link to actually work. So I'm just going to pass that and I'm going to include a link title. So company events. Great. Uh, as you can already see, whatever uh, changes or items I'm including, they're being apparent here as well. So this is also how your menu will look like once you click on save. Now I'm including a CQL. And for people who might have who may have not heard of CQL before, it's basically Confluence query language and um, it's a query language that Confluence slash Atlassian have created in order to make searching within Confluence much easier. There's multiple queries that you can use, um, which will show you different types of content. So you can see maybe content that you've recently updated. You can see your favorite content. You can see content that was created at a specific time. In order to make it easier for you to use Confluence Query Language, because it's quite powerful, we've included two documentations. One is the official CQL uh, documentation by Atlassian, which gives you a perfect overview on how CQL works like and what types of um, pages or anything you can use. Um, yeah, and it's quite easy. I'm just going to copy one of these in order to show you. Uh, we've also included a very popular blog post that we've written, which is um, a CQL guide to the most popular Confluence Cloud queries. So if you're uncertain where to get started or what to use, this is definitely a great way to start. We've also tried to sort of um, explain all of the queries and how to actually use them, what they show you. It's quite nice. Um, and you can try them out. So, great. Uh, I'm using this Confluence query and basically what it is going to show is all the pages that were created um, after the start of the month. So, great. There's an extra T there. So you can see it's already included in the live preview. Let's just save this and see how it looks like. So as you can see, this is your navigation menu right now. Let me just drop down. These are all the pages and spaces that were created after the start of the month. You can load more elements. We've tried to make this as user-friendly as possible so you don't have to load them all. Um, yeah, and the overview is quite nice. So let's just try to um, sort of play around with the configuration a little bit. Now, uh, for each top level item that you've included, so each of these, you can create nested items uh, specifically, and you can include uh, multiple items within them. You can do this within uh, every type of element apart from the um, uh, CQL, because obviously the CQL already shows you nested elements within it. So for example, we already have the navigation folder type. Let's include some internal links there. And the nested um, version of your menu can go as deep as you want to. So you can include multiple nested elements and it just keeps on going and keeps going. <laughs> and this is basically one item with multiple sub items and sub elements to it. Um, one cool feature about our uh, configuration is that you can also use drag and drop and just change it up however you want to. So you can even take one of the sub elements and move it around. It's quite easy and quite fun to play around with. And you can change it up. So as you can see now the overview already looks differently because we changed the drag and drop of that as well. We've also included an expand all and collapse all 
or if you want to be more structured when you actually play around with the structure configuration, which are quite handy. Um, yeah, and there's also multiple, um, let's say, actions that you can do with your items. So from the root up, you'll see that you have the possibility to sort your elements based on an alphabetical order. So if I click here, now you'll see that all the top elements have been sorted based on their alphabet. Apart from adding an item wherever you want to, as we saw before, you can create multiple nested elements. You're also able to remove an item in order to not uh, make it very easy for users to accidentally delete an item. We made sure to include a confirmation dialog where you can either delete or cancel that action. We've also, in the configuration, we've also included two uh, specific actions. So if you at any point want to give us more feedback with regards to um, our app or have anything that you would like to include in our app, please do so by filling out this um, Microsoft form and we'll be very happy to receive your feedback. Of course, if you have any questions or need any support, we have our Comunardo support portal that you can access. And yeah, we've included all the documentation that you need there. Now you may see that there's already a tab here called style configuration and are probably wondering what it means. Once you click on there, you'll see that there is a coming soon page. And uh, yes, that's, that's essentially what it is. The style configuration is a feature that we're currently working on. Uh, we want to include multiple ways for you to be able to uh, change up the style of the menu. So we're talking coloring, we're talking images and other stuff as well. If you click on learn more, it will show you the public roadmap that we have for subspace and particularly the progress of the customization feature so you can check that out but it's coming very soon and um yeah uh we're very excited to share it with you so this is all with regards to the actual menu itself additionally one thing that I wanted to mention is that we also offer a macro for our app, which you can use in multiple ways. And let me just show you how. Let's say test page. And if you want to access the Confluence macro, you just click on navigation, subspace navigation. There it is. So uh, this is the menu configuration for the navigation macro. Basically, what the macro is, is a display of all the items that you've included in your menu, but just shown as like a list, basically. You can use this for multiple purposes. A lot of our users use it as like a directory or a headspace for a certain documentation, and it's very helpful for them. Uh, you can choose where you want your navigation macro to start, so it can either start uh, from the root and show you all the elements, or you can use a specific element to start from. I'm getting to show only Comunardo products. Um, well, that doesn't have a lot of sub elements. So let's maybe look at after the start of the month. Yes, because it has a lot of sub elements. So this is what your navigation macro will look like. You can also specify the number of sub levels that you want to it. So this currently has only two, but you can specify it based on whatever you prefer. And you can choose to show the start element, which is also the parent of the uh, navigation macro or not display it. So if you don't display it, the after the start of the month will not show. And this is a live preview of how the uh, macro will look like so you can play around with it. Let's just save that. And yes, this is the subspace navigation macro, which you can include, let's say, overview and publish. Oh, it already exists with that name. Okay. Now we're talking.
And yes, this is what the macro looks like. You can load more elements. As we see, the after the start of the month, CQL option has a lot of elements to it. So that's great. Um, yeah, and this is overall the Subspace Navigation app. One thing that I also want to show you is where this particular arrow currently links. So once you click on it, you'll see that it shows you the space directory for your Confluence instance. One thing that we're currently working on and that we've gotten a lot of requests for is to be able to configure this arrow based on where you want it to link and other options as well. And uh, this is definitely going to be part of the style configuration uh, feature that we mentioned in the beginning as well. So that's all when it comes to subspace navigation. Please, for any requests or any features, let us know. We're, we'd be very happy to take your uh, feedback into consideration and implement it in order to give you a better application. See you soon. Bye-bye.